uh, Skype is not working uh, for James, uh, evidently. Okay, there he is. Okay, let's get him back. Uh, I don't know. Hello. I don't know what's going on. I don't know. Can you hear me? Yeah. I, I'm trying to figure out is where. This, is this uh, Jeff? Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out. Yeah, this number went through. The other number just rang forever. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what's going on here because, uh, uh, let's see, hang on for a second. Can you hang on for a second, Jeff? Sure. Now I have success. I'm talking to someone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's it. Okay, that's weird. I can call out on my other line, but it's not taking any lines in. So, James, if you can hear me out there, have you tried calling the main line? No. Anyway, uh, Jeff, how is your day going? And why don't you tell the listeners about yourself? <laughs> well, my day's going great. Thank you for asking. A uh, m- little bit about myself. I'm the state director for Southern California for MUFON. Um, also the president and CEO of MUFON Los Angeles. Uh, I am an investigator with MUFON. In fact, I'm a member of the STAR team, uh, which is one of the highest levels uh, field investigators with MUFON can achieve. I uh, was the author of a blog for a few years called The Field Investigator's Toolbox, which I'm converting into a book form now and expanding on some of the issues that I previously published. And I'm also working on another book called The Slow UFO. Um, slow is not spelled S-L-O-W, it's S-L-O, which stands for San Luis Obispo, where I live. Uh-huh. Uh, and it uh, details a Project Blue Book case that happened back in 1967 here in San Luis Obispo, California. So I've been, I've been keeping pretty busy. Uh, life is good. Well, also, you're a friend of Earl Gray. He sp- speaks, you know, nice things about you. So actually, Earl's uh, someone we met through Facebook, and I encouraged him to become a field investigator. And uh, I personally trained him and taught him everything. And after he did a few cases, I think maybe 30 or 40, I uh, made him my assistant state director and uh, moved him into the slot of chief investigator for MUFON. And, uh, yeah, he's a good friend of mine, and uh, we work very well together. In fact, uh, him and I just went uh, Wednesday night to uh, the premier VIP premiere party for Project Blue Book Season 2 down in Beverly Hills, and uh, had a pretty good time down there. I-, I survived the trip, even. What do you think about Project Blue Book? Honestly, be honest. Well, let's call it what it was. It was the Air Force's whitewash attempt to make the public believe that they were actually investigating UFOs. And, uh, you know, everyone pretty much knows that the real cases never went there, not anything good. Uh, even J.L. and Hynek came to that conclusion. Didn't take them long to figure that out. Uh, and once they were able to get the Condon report, which was, again, rigged, too, to sign off and say that there's really nothing on UFOs, that was their exit to go ahead and close the program down and, and quit even pretending that they were doing that. Oh, yeah. Well, what do you think of the series, though, Project Blue Book? Well, the TV series, you know, um, you got to understand it's it's done with production value in mind. It does, though, spark interest in people in these cases. Of course, you know, they have to change the names of the people involved, and, and they've taken production value and moved the events a little bit to where, you know, they're not exactly the same event, but it's the one it's close enough to where you can figure out the ones they're talking about. And, you know, I look at it in the same grain as I did X-Files, um, which we all know was fiction, but it did a lot for the UFO story and the back plot all through X-Files too, kind of like held that legend together of what happened at Roswell and the initial crashes and contacts with aliens and stuff. And I look at Project Blue Book TV series on history in much the same way. Um, It portrays the earlier history of ufology and the beginnings of the cover-up. 
And though it does it in a fictional setting um, with some storyline added, you know, to keep interest, it does stay relatively true to some of the historic points throughout that happened early on, say for the way they covered the Washington Lights at the end of uh, last season, season uh-huh. one. So, you know, they're, they're doing a pretty good job. Um, I, I, you know, of course, have insight into season two, and I can definitely tell everyone that season two is going to be very exciting. Um, they're starting right off the bat with a landmark case that everyone will recognize right away. And uh, they're adding another cast member that's going to be pretty interesting character. And I think everyone's going to really enjoy the way the show's going to evolve. Um, it is, you know, an amalgamation of the Heineck family. There, it's not exactly true. Um, I'm good friends with Paul Heineck, um, one of J. Allen Heineck's sons. And, uh, you know, he has some interesting stories about the family and the way they kind of blended it in together into just one child in the show. So it's, you know, of course, it's a good story, one that'll entertain people.